we started this conference and I said, and I talked to you all about uh, the reveal we were going to do about NAFTRAC and the opportunity to really do what we say, connect talented young people to real jobs, real opportunity, and the power of this model tied to professional relationships, paid internship, and mentoring. So I, wa I want to just raise a point here. You heard the story, the, the, the relationship that Sandy and Jamie um, have, the relationship of people over time and what it has led to in this organization and actually the economy as a whole. It is about relationships. So how the education community and the business community don't just work together, they get to know each other, they help each other, and they improve their communities and the lives of their children as a result of their relationship. I can't stress that enough. Um, and I want to introduce the gentleman who had this vision um, and has become a really dear friend of mine. Never knew Sandy, uh, knew only of Sandy and his amazing work when I, and I knew about NAF, I just didn't know about Sandy. Um, and when I first met Sandy, uh, he asked me a lot of uh, questions, but they weren't the questions I expected uh, in a job interview. You know, questions like, um, define leadership, and how would you measure uh, quality leadership? It weren't, those were not the questions that you would think in a normal job interview. Sandy wanted to talk to me about me. How did I become who I am? I wanted to talk to my parents. Where did I grow up? Where did I go to school? Who were my friends? What did I like to do in my off hours? He approached finding out about who I was before deciding or considering whether or not we would have a business relationship. And I think that says more about the man than anything I could tell you about his resume. He is a person who understands that relationships make the world go round, and it will either make the world better or it will make the world worse. And I am proud to work for someone who always puts the good in the first position, never the second position. Please join Sandy Weil to the stage. Give him a round of applause. Thank you. These are your people. Our people. These are your people, no. Our people. Our people, okay. So I know this doesn't look like a fireside chat, but that's what it's supposed to be. Uh, <laughs> Let's not have a fire. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not. So first question, um, John talked a lot about um, education, the skills gap. Um, and if you look at your amazing generosity, you have focused on the arts, medicine, education, uh, NAF, careers, but there's this theme that runs through it, and it's about improving lives. Talk about what, what drove you. I mean, you're so generous, um, but you are strategic uh, at the same time. What drives you to choose what you invest in philanthropically? Well, you know, I think that education is really the key to the future. And we are not doing a very good job in the United States in education. And we haven't done a very good job in uh, K through 12 for a, a long, long time. And we're leaving a lot of people behind. I think when we think about why NAF and how that program started at the beginning, it started because in the late 70s, early 1980s, the financial industry was beginning to grow. Back offices were growing, but we had a lot of turnover in back offices in New York City, and a lot of the financial companies said that th there aren't enough people to employ here to grow our businesses. We're going to have to move that part of the business out of New York to some other area. Mm -hmm. And yet, when I went around New York City, I saw all these kids in the street yeah. with no clue about <laughs> you know, the financial industry, no clue about what they were going to do in life, being taught about subjects that existed in New York a hundred years ago, and, and nothing that was current. Right. So I went to the then chancellor of the Board of Education, Frank Macchiarella, and I, I said, and it was sort of like a unique concept at the time, uh, how would you feel about our creating a public-private partnership? 
where we get the financial industry, all parts of it, to work with some of your teachers in creating a curriculum to train these young people for careers in the financial business. It'll be good for New York, it'll be good for the young people who don't know what they're gonna do. And uh, that was really the beginning. We started with one school in Brooklyn, and now we're in 580 schools with 70,000 kids with a graduation rate of over 90%. Yeah. Uh, but there's... <laughs> <laughs> but today, the, the problem is even greater yeah. than it was uh, 35 years ago or 34 years ago when, when this concept started. And just to give you an example, uh, of how bad the situation is and not matching up young people with the opportunities. Just look at, at the engineering sector of, uh, of our employment base. There is tremendous demand for engineers in the United yep. States. But yet, w less than 3% of the engineering population come from minority communities, and about 10% are women. If you take the minorities and the women together, that's about 70 some odd percent of all Americans. Yeah. So we are not educating our people for where the jobs are. So this whole concept of having summer internships, right. you know, getting a young person to really see how what they're learning in school can better their opportunities in the future, that education is gonna be really the key to where they go in, in the future and how to feel better about themselves is really, really important, more so than it's ever been. So you have been written about. Good and bad. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a, a thread about the person you are. You um, make things happen. You uh, broker relationships, deals, strategies. Um, and I think our membership thinks about how to do that in relationship to that student and that internship opportunity. And you know, Sandy, that I, you know this, fundamentally believe and agree with you, and that's why we've set a standard of 100% paid internships as our bar, right. nothing less, mm -hmm. because we know it's a game changer, it's a life changer. Um, but if I'm in the audience, I see that sometimes as an impossible requirement because what they get from the employer community is, and eh, these are high school kids. You know, we do that for mm -hmm. college. Mm -hmm. We don't do that for high school. You are so good at cutting through the no to get to the yes. Mm -hmm. What would you recommend to mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. people on the ground? Mm -hmm. How do we convince industry mm -hmm. that our kids are mm -hmm. capable of adding value to their workplace? Mm -hmm. Just let them try one or two. Yeah. Is, is the basic answer, but really, uh, if you, and companies are responsible for their bottom line, and the, but they also re have some social responsibilities. And you can give 25 or 30 kids a summer internship with what companies pay them mm -hmm. for the price of one employee. Now just think of the impact that that can have. Mm -hmm. And like John mentioned, we had 130 or 150 every summer. Yeah. These kids were terrific. The people that they worked with loved them, had them back, hired them at Christmas time, hired them at other, uh, at other vacations, hired them for a second summer because they really liked working with them and loved seeing the development uh, of, of the young people. And to be able to uh, help change our education system and, and modernize it so that it really presents value in the mind of the young people uh, and do that within the system with the partnership with, with the unions, with the local uh, school boards, with the local community supporting it and giving these jobs. And, and every company has a financial department, every company needs travel, uh, IT is important, health healthcare is important, uh, engineering is important, there's jobs in all of these areas. Right. And, and to watch these young people change from walking around with an old Walkman in a school with their pants halfway down their behind uh, to, to, to come, coming to class and feeling good about themselves, right. you know, learning manners, how to look somebody in the eye when they're talking to them. It's just the greatest, greatest pleasure. And when a company does that, 
that company is going to be a better company because the people that work for that company is going to feel that this company has a heart. This company is really real. It's going to make the world a better place. And while I'm making money and doing good things and doing things for the shareholders, we're also doing things to make the world a better place. And that's the kind of company you want to work for. Excellent. And I'm I really, really. Mm -hmm. and, and I'd just like to say that, uh, you know, Jamie came to work for me like uh, six months after uh, we sold our company to American Express and, uh, and I became the president uh, there. And that was where we really got uh, uh, the National Academy moving. And here it's all these years later. Yeah. My old boss, who I didn't get along with uh, when I worked for him, but I'm, I've been friendly with him ever since. He's been on NAF, mm -hmm. for th involved for 30 years. Ken Chenault, who was a young little guy that nobody paid attention to at American Express, <laughs> except me, uh, has been involved in this for a long, long time. And you know, we've, we've all worked hard, and, and you know, you don't, win in the short term, and certainly NAF has taught us that. Yeah. But, uh, but as Jean said, this is NAF's time. This is the country's time. Yeah. And if we don't educate our young people for the opportunities that are so broad in this country, then we're not going to be a great country. And we are a great country. We're acting like a young country. More new ideas are created in the United States than any place else in the world. Right. Any place. Right. More, more creativity comes out of this country. You know what? Everybody wants us to be the leader. Right. Well, We're not you know, doing a good job. I wish I could, I wish I could capture the, the ingredients because what you say is so true in your relationship and your knowledge with, be it Jamie or be it Jim Robinson or be it Ken Chenault. Um, they have memories of when you started this because I've mm -hmm, talked to them. Mm -hmm. And when I, I didn't know Jamie Diamond until this New Skills at Work launch and a great opportunity for NAF. And the first thing he talked to me about, he sought me out in the room, and he, he said, I remember NAF. And I remember Sandy, and I remember going to the graduation, and I remember that he, it was in his brain mm -hmm. over that huge period of time. There is a magic that happens in terms of creating something for mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. that actually benefits young people. Mm -hmm. And I think, NAF track, which we announced um, yesterday, is a game changer because it, it gives something of a stamp of approval that I hope, and I, I, I believe with the companies that are supporting it, will be a shout out to other companies of quality. Because mm -hmm. the question you raise of, you know, you watch them get better. I mean, yesterday on the stage, Nikki from Verizon said she thought when we invited Lowell to Gallo the first time with Verizon, that we were bringing out the best of the best and the rest were horrible. She thought it was a sales mm -hmm, job mm -hmm. until she went into a school and saw that it was all the students mm -hmm, had mm -hmm. this capacity. Mm -hmm. So you say we're great. You say we're acting like a young country. So the recession was a bit bumpy. So this may be our time and we may be financially able. We're hiring again. Um, but can you give the audience kind of your world e kind of economic view? That was a rough time for a lot of companies and a lot of mm -hmm, families mm -hmm. and a lot of people. We're five years out. It's getting better. What's your kind of long view? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, I think it obviously was a very rough time yeah. for a, a lot of people. They were encouraged to do things that didn't make any sense for them. Uh, and a, a lot of things went wrong, and a lot of people were at fault. But I think we're recovering from that. I think we were very lucky that our government was able to act as fast as it did to stop the breakdown in confidence and, and stop the system from imploding, right. which they've done. And now we're coming back on the other side. I think that the economic outlook for our country is terrific. Great. Uh, companies have more money than they've ever had. They're spending not as much as they should because nobody knows what the rules of the game are going to be down the road, what's going to happen with taxes, what's going to happen with this. But companies and people don't mind paying more taxes if the taxes go to educate people, you know, if the taxes are spent in an intelligent way. Right. And I think one of the things that NAF can do is can show that 
the, the, the system that we have in place can produce better results than some of these new things that are being tried outside the system, which I think the results show. Right. Um, but, you know, I, I think the future is good. Uh, you know, I get up every morning as an optimist. I think you can't be a leader unless you're an optimist. I don't go to bed every night as, a, as an optimist. optimist. <laughs> so, so that's not good I for my wife. I have that feeling as well. <laughs> Yeah. But the next morning, I'm an optimist again. That's good. And, uh, you know, Thank God for sleep, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you've got to believe that this world will work these things out uh, uh, sooner or later, and the leadership will come to, to make that happen. It's the only world we know. Right. Uh, and since I'm not sure that there's another place after this, I'm trying to do the best I can now and uh, you know, leave it to somebody else later. Well, I have to tell you, you're in front of uh, 1,400 people who believe the world's a better place because of you. I try. You know, you know one, of the, one of the things I, I think that is I have a lot of patience. You know, so really? Naf has wait a minute, a, wait a minute, hold. <laughs> this is truth on the stage? Yeah. Really? You have a ton of patience. Yeah, haven't you noticed? No. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> no, but I mean patience from the point of view of I've been married for 59 years. Ah, yes. Yes, That's well patience. done. Well done. <laughs> patience. Um, but I've been involved with NAF for over 30 years. I've been the chairman of Carnegie Hall for 24 years. I've been the chairman of Wild Cornell Medical College for 17 years. All long-term commitments. Right. And, and things get good by going a step at a time, not trying to hit a home run in six months and, and walk away. Right. So uh, I, I think that's something that young people should think about in their career uh, is, uh, you know, being patient and being a team player and thinking about how do you build something and, uh, and make it better. And when you think about the skill sets that we provide at NAF for bring, making somebody both college ready and or career ready, right. that is a key. Uh, if you think about music, music is a universal language that brings people together. And, and Carnegie Hall is probably the best example of that. And we've built a great big music education uh, 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 business at Carnegie Hall using uh, the relationships that we have with the great artists around mm -hmm. the world and, uh, and having the greatest uh, presenting hall in the world. Yeah. And, uh, and, and in, uh, in, in medicine, our medical school's graduates we have the greatest percentage of graduates that decide to go into academic medicine rather than just into uh, medical practice, which says to me that we are educating the people that are going to educate the future doctors uh, and the future scientists of this world. And I think that's a good thing. It's a really good thing. But then I got to say also, my wife has been uh, involved yes. in Alvin Ailey yeah, for 20 years. Yeah. And uh, she's been the chairman for 14. Uh, and she's going to retire from that position on uh, December 5th this year uh, when uh, Ailey has their new opening at City Center. And to make myself poorer, uh, we're going to do a fundraiser um, in honor of what Joan has done to build Ailey. Beautiful. And Joan and I are going to match whatever everybody else gives. Excellent. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's a gauntlet. That's a gauntlet. That's great. So I know I so have... So if you have anything left over... <laughs> <laughs> so I know we have... We talk about relationships. We talk about this model. Some people see it as overly complex. But getting everybody around the table sometimes is kind of hard. Um, so we wanted to give a shout-out to different elements of our structure to give a question, a shout-out mm -hmm. to you from their perspective. Right. So <laughs> if you're open to that sure. and you're good at that, well, let's, let's start. I think we've got um, Jim. So from an advisory board. So we talk all the time about business locally, right? The advisory boards locally are partners with our schools to get done the vision that you launched in John Dewey High School 32 mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. So here's somebody who's been on an advisory board in Seattle, Washington for 28 Five. 27. 27 years. Mm -hmm. So yeah. bought the idea, loves it, leads it, 
and has a question from his perspective. Thank you for being here, first off. How do you see the financial services sector changing over the next decade? Okay, let me uh, uh, just say before that, that this is a very, very important time for public-private partnerships. When you look at uh, what our environment looks like, and, and if you're realistic, our federal government doesn't have any excess money. A lot of the states don't have money, the cities don't have money, the counties don't have money. So really, it is important for the private sector to work with the public sector. And the only way that's going to work is the private sector is going to demand more performance, right. uh, or else they're not going to be happy. And um, so I think more than ever, uh, the kinds of ways that NAF operates with, with the private sector helping support the public, the public sector and, and, and working with teachers and having teachers take externships so that they can understand what they're teaching and get excited about it the same way the students get excited about it is really very important. As far as uh, the future of the financial services business, uh, if, you, if I can talk macro, and I'm not that big a macro person, eventually it will be very good because it is very important. The financial industry uh, collects money, pays people uh, for that money, and then redistributes that money through, through lending, uh, through the development of capital markets, through uh, uh, advice to uh, different companies as to how to perform better so that we end up with uh, companies that are really leaders in the world. That will not happen without a strong financial ser services sector. Right now, I think that, uh, in my opinion, the regulators are not doing a very good job. I mean, it is, it, it, the Federal Reserve should be trying to strengthen the banking uh, industry, because that is very important. You don't strengthen an industry by always going after gotcha, uh, surprising a company with new rules as to uh, uh, what the stress test is like, and, and, and uh, not understanding that companies operate in 50 countries, 100 countries, or more. And when people read about this in the paper, the employees of those companies get pretty nervous. That's not the way to build a strong financial system. It's not uh, the way to bring, build a strong financial system to uh, say that you can't make a mistake. If you are running a business you, and you have put such a fear in people that they can never make a mistake, you're going to have a pretty dull business that's not going to do very well and eventually will go by the, the, the sidelines. If somebody makes a mistake, you want to have the culture where it gets surfaced so that you can have the best minds resolve it rather than uh, they put it in the drawer or try and fix it themselves and by the time uh, it gets to the senior management it's a much bigger problem than what it what it started so we, we gotta uh, get off this punishment bit uh, we gotta get off uh, uh, these fines that uh, where does all this money go that the government is taking from uh, the banks every other week. Uh, uh, how, how can they build up their balance sheet and get to be big? If uh, what, what did J.P. Morgan last year had to pay uh, twenty some odd billion dollars uh, or more? I mean, it's crazy. That's a lot of money that that a lot of people worked hard for. Two hundred and forty thousand people, a and they're paying for companies where they didn't even create the problem. I mean, Bank of America was stupid when they bought Countrywide, but, you know, <laughs> they didn't know that they were as stupid as it turned out to be, you know, with how much they had to pay for somebody, what somebody else did wrong. So we're going to move to the next question. <laughs> uh, have, let's, let's try from a student perspective. Do we have a, do we have a, do we have a student <coughs> question there? Please. <coughs> What advice would you give to a high school students who are trying to figure out how to determine a career path? Mm -hmm. a lot of I think that's, <clears throat> um, you know, that's an interesting uh, 
uh, question, and I think uh, I think it's t I think one thing would be what uh, what do you think you like, what gets you excited where you think you can be passionate about it, uh, and then get some exposure to that industry uh, somehow by working in the summer, whether it's a paid internship where you find out that you have a partnership for life and it's not uh, the partner that you go home with, but uh, it's called FICA, uh, <laughs> which, is, which is not a friendly partner all the time. <laughs> um, but but I, 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 think, uh, I think really trying to get a feel and and if you are lucky enough to uh, be able to go to college, you have more time to get more exposed to uh, people from other walks of life and, uh, uh, and uh, more areas uh, to, to help determine that. Uh, but really, don't do something, if you can help it, that you don't really feel in your gut that I'm going to really like this. Great. And yes, one more. Here we go. Lupe. This is Miami Dade County Public Schools, and I have I am so thrilled that I have the opportunity to tell you personally that you are my hero. And for many of the educators that are here in the room, it is because of your vision that we are passionate and committed about education. So thank you very much, Mr. Wise. Okay. The question that I have is as educators, What's the most important thing that we can do to make sure that our students are not only prepared, but viewed as employable? Yeah. You know, I, I, I think that the best thing that you can really do, again, I'm going to use that word passion, but be passionate about the relationship that uh, you have with the children. and and teach what you're teaching in a way where they can understand the values that are there and, uh, uh, and, and, and help them and mentor them as to how they can improve themselves as a person. Again, again really just, just care. And so many, so many teachers really, really care. I mean, uh, yeah. in being involved in that. Look at all, all of you here in this room that I mean, you made the decision to come here because you really care. I think we got to get everybody to really care, and I think we can. Yeah, I do too. Great. Well, please. Could I just say? Of course. I just want to say just one thing uh, that, uh, from a, on a personal basis, uh, I'm thrilled that Jamie and J.P. Morgan are involved in this, and on a personal basis. I look forward to really working with him again. Uh, I think we were a, a great team, uh, and I think uh, we both had uh, pretty damn good careers. Yes. Uh, we might have been better together than we were separately, but uh, we were great separately. Um, but I, I think what J.P. Morgan is doing and the leadership in, in trying to help really change uh, how we uh, work with young people and, and get them directed to where the jobs really are is so very important. So uh, uh, when I, I heard about this gift, uh, uh, I, I, you can't believe how excited I was. And uh, I think like uh, everybody that knows him, we wish him a, a speedy recovery and, and he's a strong guy. And uh, take advantage of the time when he can't yell at you. <laughs> Take that back to the office. <laughs> All right, please join me in thanking um, our founder, the guy that started it all, has the biggest heart of anybody I've ever known. Uh, please thank Sandy for once again coming to thank us. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.